This is Terry Bollea. You may know him as Hulk Hogan. And this is Peter Thiel, the billionaire co-founder of PayPal. And this is Roy Strom. Hello. Roy covers the business of law for Bloomberg Law. Blockbuster revelation by tech billionaire Peter Thiel, admitting he is behind the campaign against Gawker, including that monster lawsuit by Hulk Hogan. When Peter Thiel financed Hulk Hogan's invasion of privacy lawsuit, many pundits thought it was an example of a new phenomenon sweeping the legal sector called litigation finance. But that suit wasn't really litigation finance. That was just Peter Thiel trying to settle a score. I was convinced that if I didn't do something, nobody would. So then, just what is litigation financing? In a nutshell, litigation finance is when a third party invests in a lawsuit in exchange for a share of the profit. The idea is that a good legal claim is like an asset. It's worth money. But there's risk. A case is only worth money if you win in court. So if you lose, the investment firm is out all their money. Now, having anyone other than the direct parties to the litigation profit from a suit has historically been frowned upon. This is the legal doctrine known as champerty. Here's legal scholar Maya Steinitz to explain. Champerty is just a fancy legal name for the basic principle that traditionally the law prohibited a non-party from funding a party for a profit. Champerty laws date back to the Middle Ages in England when unscrupulous feudal lords would fund the claims of their underlings in order to harass one another. And the idea was to protect the court system, which at the time was weak, from being used for purposes that are not achieving justice. Over time, the practice of funding others' legal claims for profit went the way of jousting and the plague. Until, fast forward to 1993, reanimated dinosaurs terrorize small children. Beanie Baby Mania sweeps the nation. And in Australia, New South Wales rolls back its antiquated champerty laws. Lawmakers there wanted to allow outside interests to fund class action lawsuits, which were notoriously expensive. Sensing opportunity, entrepreneurial investors started financing other cases in need of funding and taking a cut of the profits. An industry was born. Litigation funders love to say that some plaintiffs without money from the funders just wouldn't be able to afford the costs of litigation. Whatever injustice happened to these parties would just go unchallenged. Eventually, the practice found its way back to England and the United States, where litigation funding has become big business. Today, by one recent study, there's as many as 40 funders. Together, they have about 10 billion in, in capital. In the past year alone, they spent close to two and a half billion investing in cases. That growth has caught regulators, lawmakers, and big law firms off guard. In many ways, the world of litigation finance is still the Wild West. Currently, there aren't any regulations or laws that directly regulate litigation finance at all. One concern over litigation finance is whether it'll lead to frivolous lawsuits. Funders just kind of point to the economics of it, and they say it doesn't make sense for us, from a money standpoint, to be paying for cases that aren't going to win. Another concern is whether the funders uh, will exert control over plaintiffs uh, on key decisions in the case like when to settle or when to go to trial. And litigation funders will tell you that that's not something they're doing. It's a really hot button issue for litigation funders. In the end, litigation funding isn't about revenge. It's about making money. And if there's one thing we know, where there's money, lots of money, regulation is never far behind. If I had to predict, I would say that some measure of disclosure will certainly become part of the regulatory landscape in the coming years very soon. What kind of disclosure, just how much needs to be disclosed and at what point of the litigation does it need to be disclosed?